What's up everybody? You know what? I'm not gonna waste any time with this video, okay? I have a lot of things that I wanna say, but I wanna be clear on some things first before I get started. First of all, this is not a video meant to discourage anybody from working at Apple. In fact, you should work wherever you wanna work, okay? And they're actually, I'm gonna start off with some benefits, okay, to working at Apple. Uh, obviously, there's great benefits. They pay for education, healthcare, um, you get discounts on, on all the products that they sell, um, whether you're part-time or full-time. There's a lot of stability working at a place like Apple. Uh, there's a lot of areas of opportunity. Apple's a very big company. It's not just about what they do from the retail level. They have a corporate level that covers a wide variety of uh, different things, whether you're in finance or, you know, just it's, it's this is definitely not meant to discourage However, there are some things that I feel like you should know, okay? I've worked at Apple for about three years, and I'm specifically talking about the retail side. I'm not going to get into anything on the corporate side, uh, but I do feel like there are some things that you should know before coming into this company, okay? Because from my experiences, from working at Apple compared to some other places that I've worked in the past, there are definitely some things that I feel like you should know. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, first things first, people like to get it on at Apple, okay? And I understand that, you know, especially today in the workforce, you know, you have a lot of women, you have a lot of men, and anytime they're working in the close proximity of each other, you see them often, you know, things happen. Uh, and so whether you're looking for the love of your life, or the love for the night, <laughs> there's something in the water here at Apple, man. And I'm talking about from the top down, whether it's management to all the way, all the way down. Okay, people, people be mixing it. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I have a rule. I don't deal with people at the job. Okay. Um, when I was younger, that was a thing. But like for me, I just learned that you know I like to keep things separate. Okay. I like when I go to work that I focus on the job, you know, and then when I'm not at work, I can focus on my lady or whatever the case may be. This idea of being around each other all the time, to me, it, it feels a bit suffocating, okay? Especially in an environment like this, because we're not talking about a scenario where you're on one side of the business and the other person on the other side of business, you hardly see each other. Now, that, that does happen, but by and large, you're always going to be in a close proximity of each other, okay? And that's where people start talking, they start gossiping, and, you know, it's just, it gets messy, man. And anytime you can take that out and just kind of focus on the things that you need to focus on, to me, in my opinion, it's for the better. But you do what you want to do, um, but I felt the need to let you know, like, it happens a lot over here, okay? Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the way things are structured from a management level at Apple. Now, I find this to be a bit unique compared to some of the other places that I've come from. At Apple, what you'll find a lot of times is that there are just like so many layers of leadership that you have to deal with on a given day. Uh, what I mean by that is you might have a store manager and then below them is what they call senior managers. And you might have two or three of those. And then below them, you have regular managers. And then below them, you have what they call leads, which can be about eight, nine different people there. And then below that, you have people who they initiate to have control for the day in pro positions and whatnot. Look, coming from other jobs that I've come from where you kind of knew who was in charge. You knew who you needed to impress. You knew who you had your reviews with. And, and when it came time for promotions, who would critique the work that you've done. And you spent your time there trying to be productive and trying to show your worth. You know, yeah, you might deal with two or three people. But when you have to deal with so many chefs, so many cooks in the kitchen, you got to hope that everybody's on the same page. And that's where the problems lie. Because they're not always on the same page. And so therefore you end up having to, you know, you come in one day, this person has one style of managing you versus the other. 
you know, maybe there's something going on in the company and they want everyone to know about, but one person didn't tell you, the other one tells you a different way. It's like, it can be overwhelming because you have so many people pulling and pushing you in so many different directions that like, whoa, don't, I don't ever recall that being a thing in a lot of the other lines of work that I've come from. So I feel like if you are somebody who's come from other places where there's been a lot more structure in that regard, just know that you, you better know how to ingratiate yourself with a lot of different people uh, because it's, it's going to be towards your benefit or detriment in terms of your growth at Apple. So that's one, that's, a, that's another important thing, which leads me to the next thing. Okay. And that is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay. When the situation occurred with George Floyd, all right, a lot of companies started to look at, you know, their business practices and started to, you know, there started to be a heavy focus on a lot of corporations in terms of, you know, how do you go about putting certain people of color, you know, and giving them opportunities, right? And Apple is one of those companies that was being criticized heavily during that time. Now, I was not there. I came after the fact. And so coming into it, you know, you start to hear, you know, all these things about, you know, we're, we're going to have, you know, black at Apple or we're going to have, you know, all these initiatives that's meant to make things to be a bit more leveled, right? Level playing fields, so to speak. And so <laughs> here's the thing with that. In my experience, okay, in my experience, I want to be clear. I am not one of those people that feel like you should be in a certain position simply for the color of your skin. I think it should be for how you work. Um, and that should speak for itself and how you carry yourself. And I feel like there are certain qualities that you cannot simply look at a person's skin color to determine whether they are good at that. That's me. Okay. But I understand the world that we live in. And I look at this and I say to myself, okay, a lot of times in these scenarios, you hear things like, oh, you know, maybe black people, we're not, we're not applying for these roles. Okay. Or maybe you're just not qualified for these roles. Right. And, and fair enough. But when I come into an environment and I see that there are people of color who are capable, okay, who are applying and they don't really get to where they need to be, I start to look around, I start to look at those that are. And I start to say to myself, okay, if you are the best person for the job, so be it, right? But when you start to look around and you start to observe and you start to realize like, hey, every single area of importance, because here's the thing, don't, be, don't get it twisted. It's not about just hiring people of color. It's Hey, are they in a position of influence? Are they in a position where they can actually impact the business? That's another thing. And so what I started to see is that when you look at some of the upper management, there's very, very little representation there. Now, if you are someone coming into that, again, it's not to discourage you. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. It, I mean, it does. But I, I want you to be clear because... I want to be clear about this. This is one of the reasons why I specifically feel like, especially people of color, black men, black women, like try to create your own thing. Okay. Especially if you have gifts, talents, a passion for something, try to develop that, try to put the same effort that you put into a lot of these jobs, trying to climb the corporate ladder, put that same energy if you can into things that you created from the bottom up and develop and own it and be able to have that to pass on to your kids, you know, because when you work at places at these jobs, understand you're disposable. Okay. In their eyes, they look at it like, Hey, we could just replace you anytime we want. And so when I see people put a lot of faith into these companies, a lot of effort and a lot of emotion, a lot of, it's like, look, man, at the end of the day, salaries are the first to go. Okay. You're just a salary number. And so you're just a head count. And so what I'm saying is when I looked at this structure and the fact that, wait a minute, you guys are actually trying to sell it to us that you're focusing on this and you're trying to make sure that there's more representation in certain areas. In my opinion, 
I didn't really see that. Okay, and I'm talking about it didn't matter because here's the thing about Apple. A lot of times they have so many people working in so many areas of the business, right? And you hear their name and, you know, people like to use emojis or memojis, you know, as like their icon for who they are. You don't really see a lot of, you know, black people in positions that matter in higher level positions. You don't really see that. And so, again... Could it be that we're not applying? Could it be that we're not qualified? Maybe. I'm just saying as someone who was at a certain level, when I looked around, I did see people that I that that could do the work, but they, they weren't given those same opportunities as other people that I started to see that was getting opportunities that, you know, by and large, they didn't really, you, you, you question like what got them there, right? I'll just leave it at that. So, now that brings me to the next thing, okay? And the next thing I wanna talk about is in terms of, <laughs> and this kind of ties into the diversity, equity, and inclusion thing, okay? If you are a conservative or you have conservative beliefs or maybe you're very religious or, look, Apple is based in Cupertino in LA. I'm not gonna get into the whole left wing, right wing, liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican. Look, at the end of the day, okay, especially in a lot of the, a lot of the work that we go into, just understand that they're probably going to be way more left-leaning jobs than you're going to find right-leaning jobs, okay? And I say that to say that a company like this, in my observation, you know, Christianity is always the butt of the joke. Catholics is always the butt of the joke. But when it comes to certain other religions or certain other, they don't really, they don't play with them like that. And so I'm just saying to you, if you are someone who likes to wear your, you know, beliefs on your sleeves, you want to be very careful because chances are it does not align with some of the some of the things that they're doing there and you could be you could be setting yourself up for failure okay because a lot of things can be misconstrued a lot of things can impact your work right you hear a lot of times about you know people putting out certain tweets and getting fired as a result right and so we live in a very different environment okay and so i'm just saying if you are somebody who have certain conservative beliefs or certain you might want to keep it to yourself you might want to keep it to yourself because you're not really going to find a lot of that here. You know, as a company, I'm talking about as a company, are you going to find individuals? Yeah, you're going to find individuals that I'm sure you can connect with. And that's another thing, too. You know, another going into the next thing uh, in terms of promotion. Right. I want to be clear on this. It's very difficult. It's very difficult, in my opinion to climb the ladders or to get promoted, especially on a retail level at Apple. A lot of the people that I interacted with were at the company for a very long time. Here's why. Because, and this is the thing too, I think people, people get confused. Um, <laughs> Apple's not very rigorous, okay, in terms of who they select, all right, in terms of their hiring process. Obviously, they're going to look into your background and things like that. But I'm talking about in terms of education, in terms of experience, like eh, you start to wonder, like, you know, are you guys really paying attention to like the people that you bring in? And I say that because it's very hard to move up when there aren't a lot of roles opening. And especially when the people that are in certain roles got in at a certain time when things were a lot easier to get into those roles. And they know, they're like, man, I know this is as good as it gets. They're not leaving. And so if you're somebody who's a manager, for example, and the next level up for you is assistant manager or store manager, and you got to wait for that person to get out the way, that person's probably not going to get out the way anytime soon. But now that you can understand in a lot of companies, right? But I'm talking about when you get all the way, as you're going down, it's the same way. And it's not for the same reasons because... It's different when you're in a company where people feel like, hey, I could take this same skill, this same talent, 
and I could go to competitor or I could go to another job and I could make more money, right? I have this skill that I know is going to translate. The issue is a lot of the stuff that people were doing in Apple, specifically on the retail side, they understand is not going to really translate. You know, a lot of them don't have higher education. Um, and when they look at what they're making relative to trying to go and do something else in their eyes, they understand that, hey, this is as good as it gets. So if you're somebody who's coming in and you're somebody who's like, hey, I'm going to try to, you know, do the work. I'm going to try to drive results. I'm going to try to understand that the thing that could be stopping you, the thing that could stifle you for the next two, three, four, five years isn't necessarily how you are going about your work. It's just the fact of like, hey, the next role or the next position doesn't open up anytime soon. And so that's a kind of a weird th place to be in because again, when you compare it to other places, a lot of times people are like, hey, I'm gonna do this for X amount of years, um, but they, they feel like, hey, I could get more money over there. And you start to see a bit more movement. You're not gonna really see that, you know, you, you don't. And so if you are somebody who's, you know, like myself, I'm, I'm, I'm a very driven person. I like to, you know, I put myself on a timeline, you know, like, hey, in two years, I wanna do this, or in three years, I wanna do that. Understand that all of that might get sidelined, okay? Because the person ahead of you knows this is as good as it gets for them, okay? So I'm going to wrap that up right here, <laughs> okay? Um, because there's definitely some other things that I could get into, and I may make separate videos just kind of highlighting on certain, just certain specific things that I think a lot of people should benefit, could benefit from, especially coming into work like Apple, Um but I wanted to make this video once again, just so you guys can sort of see exactly what's going on, especially in a lot of these places, because I really do believe that some of the things that I mentioned to you now, it's probably going on in a lot of other jobs as well. It's just that depending on the company that you're with, a lot of that is magnified. And I'm just saying a place like this, understand like it's magnified, you know, to a great, to a great deal. And so you definitely just want to be prepared when you come into this type of work. Um, I'm wishing all you guys the best. You know, if you do choose to work at a place like Apple, good luck. Um, my personal belief, again, you should try to create your own thing, uh, be your own boss. Uh, however, those steps may take. It might, I'm not saying it's an overnight thing, but whatever your direction is, you may want to focus on that. You should want to focus on that because safe isn't safe today. We've seen that during the pandemic when a lot of people lost their jobs or a lot of people was being forced to take, you know, the jab and so forth. Like if you truly want to have control over your your mind, body and soul, you know, that might mean that you you're going to have to do things on your own. And so I'll leave that right there. Um, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe for more. And. Like I said, I got, I got plenty more on the way. So that's it for the video. Peace and love. I'll catch you later. Peace.